Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to World at War Comics. My returning guest, Mr. Robert Geronimo. He is the writer, the creator, kind of the artist. We'll talk about that. Has been the <laughs> artist, though, for a long time. Yes. Long realm, um, mm -hmm. the longest running um, single creator owned comic book um, at Alterna. I know we talked yes. about this the last time it came out on a Wednesday. Um, I think it's on issue 21, 22. Mm -hmm. something there. Yep. So you're getting very close, though. I have a figure if you keep dropping four at a time, man, you'll be surpassing that too. <laughs> I'll get there. I'll you'll get, get there, there eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I saw soon, that, soon. That, that evil villain came out of you for a second. I got a little nervous. <laughs> I got a little nervous. He was sweating was there for a minute. People laugh <laughs> at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I can't wait. I just I'm just having so much fun. Yeah, you know, every time I think, oh, you know what? It's time to end the series. You know, I have the ending. The ending is there. Everything I know how it's going to end. It's just you know, every time I'm like, all right, now it's time to end it. Then I'm like, but. If I do this extra story, it'll make the ending even sweeter, you know? <laughs> so that's the thing. It's this vicious yeah. cycle because I'm having so much fun. It's a lot of work to do. I know the ending. But what happens is once I put out new stories or I do, do more research, it's, it recycles. And all of a sudden, I get new ideas in this world. It, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It really is. And I'm so grateful that people enjoy it. That's, that's the biggest takeaway out of everything. A hundred percent. I mean, so before we dig into some of the changes, because there there are some changes from the last time I talked to you. Again, this mm -hmm. happened before our conversation today. Um, but the sure. way you're going about um your title, there are some mm -hmm. changes you brought on some other folks to help you out a little bit on the art side, which has been amazing. Yes. But Thank just you. so everyone knows, let's start the um conversation off with the Indiegogo, which mm -hmm. is current right now. I mean. You're at fifty six percent, and how many days yeah. has it been live? That's insane, I think, right? I think it's been three days. days? Yeah, three yeah. days. Yeah, Dude, come on, man, yeah. that is so awesome! Congratulations. So, I mean, we, we don't you. want to speak too soon, right? You're at six percent there, but I, I assume <laughs> that you did that in three days, twenty seven days till it ends. You should be able to get to that goal, right? Yes, yes, God willing, <laughs> God willing, God willing for sure, man. But congratulations! But uh, we'll make sure we put all the information on how to get to the Indiegogo in the subject um oh, thank of, the, you. Uh, of the video and we'll blast this out but um yeah if you if you are not aware of blood realm what's great about um your indiegogo that's taking place right now not only mm -hmm. can you get the current issues that are part of the the current campaign you have all the other issues that people could catch yes. up on and so uh and if you love like a a very high level um very um history backed educated yeah. Um, fantasy with everything that you would want from fighting to gore to all kinds of different things going on. There's nights. The, yeah. This is the title for you, man. Thank you, bro. Um, so yeah, a lot, a lot going on on the Indiegogo uh, front there. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. You know, we, we had to get some kind of perk going there. So this way, if people were new to the series, we can kind of have some kind of like back issue bundle. So this, they know, you know, what happened before. But the thing is though, is that this particular arc, actually happens first chronologically oh, so, so if you want to just right yeah in a way yeah so if you want to just dive in now you know this could be your first arc so that, that's the interesting thing i always try to tackle every miniseries with a brand new story with fresh characters and you can kind of just dive in in any miniseries and treat like the other stuff as prequel you know so that, that's how i've been trying to work it so it, not necessarily purposefully, but it's just been happening that way. Yeah. No, I think it's worked out just fine. <laughs> oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think you're doing well, man. Because this will put you at issue, is it 18? 18. By the end of this, yeah, this will be 18. Wow, 18 man. issues. Now, yeah. when you created Blood Realm, when this idea came, because I know we were talking um, before, you you are a uh, professor of yes. history of arts, right? right? So this is already in your blood. Right, oh, yeah. something you're super passionate about, and then to be mm -hmm. able to create this whole universe uh, and world, um, and to be able to tie in some of that. I mean, how special is that for you as a creator? Oh, it's you know, it is history has been something that always inspired me, and you know, it really is this. I would say, I don't know, it's the ultimate motivator for me. Like every time I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what do I do with these characters. 
then I'll be teaching maybe Greek art or I'll be teaching ancient Roman art. And I just be like, wow, like that really happened. <laughs> like this happened in human history. This isn't fantasy. Yeah. You know, it's like your brain can't wrap around it. Then when you start to dig into that particular point of history, maybe a Roman civil war, I mean, your brain just goes all over the place. And now you have a massive arc that you could put into your story. So, you know, I was telling you before, like it kind of feeds into my ideas. You know, I teach in the day and then next thing you know, I get all the story content, all this, all these ideas. And then I come back and I create, you know, so it helps each other. I, I think <laughs> symbiotic. So. Yeah, yeah. Now, do most of your students or all of them know that you also create, write? and draw comics or no one knows and someone one day is going to be on the internet like what the hell <laughs> that, that's happened a couple of times uh i don't I, you know what it is i want to tell them i usually wait till after because i want them to see how history can you know influence you in some way in a positive way you know so for me you know you don't have to be a writer of textbooks you know you can pour this love into comic books you know, you can pour this love into music, you know. So this is how I respond to all of this inspiration. And is it is in the comic book medium because it's a medium that I've always grew up with and I love it. Yeah, yeah. No, it definitely comes through. We were just talking about that before we hit the record button about some of our favorite professors or teachers growing mm. up. You know um, who they are because they loved what they did, right? And yeah. then the teachers that we hated the most – they hated to be in there. And I feel like sometimes mm -hmm. that feeds the environment of your classroom, right? They know when you're like, dude, I just need to get this hour done so yes. I can move on to things I really enjoy because I don't like doing this, right? Exactly. That That's the worst. That's the worst type of professor. I've had those. And fortunately for me, I've had art history professors that when I saw them do this, because when they teach, it is a performance in a way. It, it's like you're doing a routine, you know? And, you know, when I watched them, when I was in school, I was just like, wow, like, they love this. They're fired up. And then I don't know what happened. You know, I, I love art. And then to be able to write about art, learn the history of art. But it wasn't just art history. You're learning about the time. You're learning about mythology. You're learning about language. You're learning about religion. You're learning about all these different things that influence the work of art. So it was all different disciplines, which is what I really liked about it. Yeah, yeah. Now, getting back to the comic side of it, um, you you were you kind of mentioned this, right? You're teaching all day, you're studying mm -hmm. history, and then all of a sudden, inspiration comes. Yeah, is like every one of your arcs so far through this has come from that kind of inspiration, and you were able to kind of map out three or four issues that kind of bring oh, yeah. that together. Is that how that's been working for you? Oh, absolutely. Particularly with this one. Um, they're all influenced by all of that stuff that I mentioned, but this one in particular was truly, truly influenced by specific periods in history, uh, mainly ancient Greek and Roman, and also um, the kingdoms of Italy. I mean, uh, when I was reading about the Venetian Empire, I read this incredible book. It was called City of Fortune. And, you know, you don't, you, when you hear about, about the naval battles that took place, I was like, that's it. Naval battle and blood realm needs to happen. <laughs> and I don't think the readers will complain. <laughs> I don't think so, man. I do not think so at all. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So specific things, but this one mainly, I don't know. It's just um, wider scope because it's demanded. It's a big story where we're going across, I would say, almost the entire map that I made of the Lands of Mordrin. Lands of Mordrin is, is the fictional world in my series. We're really, you know, instead of exploring little pockets, this is like we're traversing the entire map in this mini series. We're all over the place, you know. So it's like really globe trotting, you know. <laughs> it's epic. So I, from that perspective, because you are bringing in so many different parts of this world that you've created that maybe hasn't been touched on before, mm -hmm. how much of it? Um, obviously you talked about the historical side of it, but how much of sure. the old building did you have to do to be able to tie in that story? Right. Because I mean, new cities, new lands, new Kings, I assume, yes. new, oh, all that yeah. stuff. Oh yeah, totally. That was the thing I had to think about the dynasties that the mages had, because the mages are the ones that are in true power at this point. 
And in the other parts of the series, we never see that. It's been talked about. You know, it's been mentioned about the beautiful city of Vorogoth and how it looked when the mages were in power. Then suddenly I was like, oh, I have to show that now. <laughs> I have to show that. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> so I had to do research, think about other other magnificent empires at their highest peak, their, their time of decadence, what that was, what that was like. And all that research into architecture and kind of bringing it all together to create a unique look for this particular period in Vorogoth's history, which is that city. So yeah, thinking about all of that, the unique look, different dynasties of the grand sorcerers, grand sorcerers are the, the rulers, like almost like a king in a way in mage society, their dress, their style, their temples, but it's been, it's been so much fun. <laughs> I like the research part. I love the research part. I would think as a practicing professor, that would be a pretty fun part for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And don't get me wrong. I love to draw. I love to write. Yeah. But, but you know, the research part just gets me fired up, you know, because like I, mean, I don't have to. <laughs> that's why we do, do any of that stuff. Realm, right? Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> now, is this your largest arc? Six? Yeah. 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 32 pages each. That's crazy. They are. They're jam-packed. They're jam-packed. And we're even going into a period that's prehistoric mm. where these kaiju monsters had once ruled all of the lands of Mordrin. So now we're going to see what that's like. So it fits within the main story. And you know it makes sense as to why we're going back there for this brief period. That's issue 17. But man, uh, Keir Covington did such a crazy job illustrating this big kaiju fight. And I think with the early civilizations of men uh, worshiping these beasts, because this is when the humanoid civilizations are starting to rise and they see these massive creatures. It would be like if man existed with dinosaurs, they would probably worship the dinosaurs, right? I mean, look at this gigantic serpent. Uh, you know what I mean? So that's what's happening with the early civilizations of men. They're kind of worshiping different, they're called old beasts. And we're going to see that play out too. Why? Well, I... You know, going through the Indiegogo, um, which I was very appreciative because there's been a, a few issues that have had a hard time grabbing because the Alterna, Alterna website has been out of a few of them, I think. Yeah. Um, and so I was able to kind of fill some voids um, through the Oh, Indiegogo. great. It was awesome. But when I was going through the covers, I yeah. think it's, is it cover 18 that Kier did with the helmet? Yes. And Oh my gosh, man. You like that They're one, all right? all amazing, but that one just got me, man. I know. That one just got me. It was incredible. Incredible. It's just, and it's such a pivotal moment because, you know, that's Chiron Morvell. He's the, he's the main character. We're following his journey, his rise. And, you know, I put him through the ringer in this <laughs> one. Uh, he, he puts, he really goes through it, you know. But those are the heroes that we love, the ones that really endure trials where you know they're beaten and beaten and beaten right life is hitting them so hard but even though his helmet is broken like he's still getting up you know those are the characters that we root for you know what when things become too easy for characters well there's nothing for me to latch on to because you know let's be let's be real we're all going to experience suffering so when we see a character who experiences it but then gets up you know dust himself off even though his helmet's broken right his his armor's ripped right but he's still up and he's got a shield and he's got a sword i mean let's go let's go you pumped me up man i was like a locker room <laughs> jeez <laughs> i got chills <laughs> oh, yeah, man i'm ready to fight man <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, he's ready to join the iron wolves <laughs> it's gonna take me a minute to get off my chair because i'm getting old but dude you pump <laughs> me up bro <laughs> uh, that, that, that's the mentality I've, I've had to do when i would write this character you know you know because it's um sometimes you know you write characters that you want to aspire to you know and you put yourself into those characters because you know like i said we've all experienced hard times but you know we want to triumph over them so let's give ourselves a character that can do it. Yeah. Pumps yeah. you up. It pumps yeah, you pumps up. Pumps you up. Absolutely it does. Absolutely it does. Now, I, I have to ask this question. Why, while you're teaching, right, and you're going through um, something that you've studied um, pertaining to um, art history or history in general, mm -hmm. 
and you sure. start to get this you know how it is like a almost like a light bulb goes off you're like oh my gosh that would be perfect for the next yes. like how do you capture that while in the middle of doing your daily duties mm -hmm. outside of comic books um sure. and then keep that thought fresh to where That's you can get into uh, your comic later a great great question i always all the time always have a very small actually i have it i have it in the other room mm -hmm. very small little notebook it's tiny this way it's small it's in my pocket it's always in my suit jacket inside pocket so if i ever get an idea real quick write it down real quick over at my podium or even after class i'll remember it but i that never leaves me that thing even if i'm on vacation even if I'm just going out to, for a walk, that always comes with me. It's it, And it's not big. You know what I mean? If it was too big, I wouldn't take it with me. That's the thing. Yeah. So if it's small, you know, there's no excuse. It fits yeah. right in the pocket. That's Literally, it's like this big. That's it. <laughs> Such a good idea. I mean, we all think we come up with ideas once in a while, but most of the time I forget by the end of the day, I'm like, damn, I have this really good idea. So, I mean, that's such a, like a good practice as a creator. Mm -hmm because you just don't know what's going to inspire, right? Oh, yeah. I could be watching the news and get an inspiration. I could be, oh, sure. I could be come from all these different areas. Right. And if you're not prepared, you could lose it. Um, the worst is, is when it comes in the shower because I'm all wet and I'm like, no, 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 no. no. I can't <laughs> take yeah, it. I in see stuff. TikTok. He's sending me these waterproof ones, man. I have to send them to you. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Be a little weird though. Being in the shower with a pin and pad, man. <laughs> Listen, you got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome, man. I, because I, I would think, especially because your book, um, your title follows so much of kind of your everyday life of digging yeah. through history and finding history, that would be extremely important to be able to capture that in that moment. So that way you are able to kind of plot out um, that storyline and how that fits mm -hmm. into blood realm so when you get home do you have like a whiteboard where you take those ideas and you start to kind of or do you just go to pad and paper and just start writing out what you think it's going to be i just i i do it all in that little book so then i'll write down the idea and then i'll start plotting it out on like the next page mm -hmm. right and then once i feel like things are a little bit more i would say um formulated or something yeah. i would i would start typing them out just so i have it on, on the keyboard and then I see it that way. So, but I think it's very important to write it out first. So it goes to head, to hand, to paper, and then, then to screen, you know? Uh, sometimes I don't like to just do it right away, straight to screen, you know, on the computer. I think something about the organic or tangible feel of the paper and the pen, I don't know, it just feels a little bit more natural and organic for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. Now, as you progress from issue number one, mm -hmm. to, uh, as you progress from issue number one all the way to 18, do you find your story over time has become more detailed and a little bit more complex? Oh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's Absolutely. how I sense it as I read through it. Like, uh, yeah. and, and is that the reason why uh, more artists have come in to kind of help support because of yes. the complexity of the storyline? Thousand percent. No, you nailed it. That's a hundred percent right. It's getting complex in a good way, right? Yeah, of course. Exactly. Yeah. yeah and right. That could be negative. So I don't I don't want to make it no, I know what you mean. You can't understand it anymore. No, no, not at all. Of course. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, no, I know it uh, yeah, a hundred percent. It's also because I'm like, well, you know what? If we're gonna explore these different time periods, right? It'd be cool if they had their own unique artist to it, so it feels like it's separate, you know. So like I said, you know. Christian Rossi, this one particular artist who's fantastic, is drawing the mage city at its decadence, at its at its peak, at its height. And I feel like it should have its own artist for that period because, you know, it has a unique look because we never saw it before. And Kier is doing the old beast stuff with all the big gigantic kaiju creatures. And seeing that in his style gives it a sense of place and a sense of time. Whereas I'm still drawing the main storyline, gotcha. you know, in, in the modern time. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I just feel like it gives it this extra, extra sense of, of, I don't know, uniqueness and, and moment in time, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it makes a lot of sense. And I think it's 
pretty smart as well, right? Especially as you're digging into different portions of that world that you've created to have its mm -hmm. own uniqueness. Because in reality, if you lived at that time and you did go from one city to another, it'd be completely different depending on well the said. religion, depending on, you know, yes. culture and everything, right? So that's, that's. Absolutely. Well said, a hundred percent. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So, yeah. yeah. So that, that that's the essence of why it, it really helps to have these different artists. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, um, as um, oh, I had a, a question I was going to say, and I've just, that's what happens when you get old, Geronimo. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I'm just falling apart, man. Um, I have those moments in class, too, where I'll be sitting there, I'll be, I'll be talking, I'll be like, what, what, what the what, what painting are we talking where about? I? Where am I? You know what happens is we have this filing cabinets of knowledge in our head, and sometimes we need to go, Ch -ch -ch which filing cabinet was that in? <laughs> oh, I know. No, I, it came back to me now that you said that. Perfect. See? Um, yeah, see? Um, so you, you've, you know, from issue one up until I would say 12, 13, you've done it all right from cover to interior art. I guess you had yeah. help a little bit, but not much, just a couple, just a couple, but mainly been you, right? It, it's been me. Yeah, exactly. And now you're getting into these other issues where there's a little bit more collaboration yeah. um, that you really haven't. And correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want to speak on your mm -hmm. behalf, but you really sure. haven't had up until this point. Do you notice a creative difference having a couple more people being more involved in the story than before? And how has that helped or even maybe made it a more complex? I don't know what that experience is. Wow, uh, no, that's a great question. So um, I have had, like you said, other artists come in, but they were more like little short stories that just were like expanding things, mm -hmm. you know, not like uh, not the main storyline. It was like, hey, here's a little 10 page or here's a little five pager, you know. Uh, by, by a guest artist that just kind of expands the lore a little bit. But now I have an artist who's really illustrating two pages worth, uh, two issues worth. You know, that's that's a meaty chunk <laughs> of sure. the storyline of Blood Realm. So that was interesting because I was like, wow, you know, they have to really get in my head. Because it's one thing where, again, it's, it's a shorter story, a smaller story. I, I can... I can be a little bit more precise because it's 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 a it's a pocket. But now that this is a grand arc, this is something different. So getting them to think how I think, <laughs> you know, to see what I see yeah. was quite a challenge in the beginning for me, you know, because I never had to have them tell this large portion of the main, main storyline. So uh references, you know, sending them references, sending them sketches that I've done. So they can get a real feel and also, you know, being a motivator too, you know, really motivating them and saying, listen, this is what this character is going through. Like I was talking with Chiron, getting, getting up, you know, I, I had to, in a sense, pump them up how I would pump myself up or feel sad when I need to feel sad for a character, you know, because you really have to, a real creator really needs to go to those places within themselves you know, even though it may feel uncomfortable, you have to do it because if you're uncomfortable or you're sad or you're happy or you're joyous, you know, or you're angry for a character, the reader is going to feel it too, you know? So I was trying, you know, that was, it was really fun. And I'm very fortunate, as you can tell from the art, in my opinion, th they were able to do it a hundred percent. I got, I got them pumped up. <laughs> Yeah, you definitely did, man. All those covers on these next four issues are just bangers, oh. man. I just, I, I think if people could just go to Indiegogo and just look at the covers, you don't need yeah. to know anything else. Look at those covers. Yeah. <laughs> They're just so badass. And then for some of us that have followed um, um, the storyline, right, yeah. we know, right, it's been good already. So if it's just going to get even better, just because yeah. you're expanding so much, I, I mean, there's got to be a lot of excitement around this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so just to show you how much we're expanding it, uh, Tommy. So, um, I've been creating, uh, it's been taking some time and I haven't revealed it yet because I want to do it right. Um, Voragoth is the main city. I've been creating Voragothian, which is a new language. And uh, all my knowledge of history, studying languages, um, it's a mixture of Greek and Latin. Wow. And I've been developing the rules, uh, I have to say, I need some sleep. I'm going to be real. <laughs> some sleep. I'm in desperate need of sleep. But I'm so fired up more than ever for, for my series. Um, I, I, I've been creating a new language. And I, I can't even believe I'm saying that. It's, it's, it's insane. 
It is insane, man. <laughs> it is insane. In a, um, in a good way, but it's crazy. A, <laughs> you're going to see um, some of the language in this miniseries. And then what I will be doing, because I didn't have enough pages, because 32 pages is my limit, I'm going to be making a booklet that's like a guide for the language. I was just going to ask that. You, you, yeah, you know it's I mean? coming. How are we going to know? Like we got to, <laughs> looks like, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I will do a little video on my YouTube channel and then, yeah, um, uh, yeah but because, uh, you know, I want to make it feel immersive. Yeah. As immersive as possible. You know, so this way, you know, I don't know, who knows? We could all have some fun and we can speak in another language secretly. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so cool, man. That I know. Would be really cool. I mean, so, I mean, Jerome, I know at the beginning of our conversation, you said there is an end. Yes. But you're talking like that end might be a while. <laughs> Just It might be. You, you it can't might be. create a language and, and bring on new. <laughs> Dude, it doesn't sound like like issue 20 is the end, right? That's not no, what I'm hearing no. at all, right? <laughs> I mean, my original idea was that it was it was going to be 50, you know, okay. maybe yeah. first it was 25. But now I'm like, that's no way that's not going to happen. Um, it's too much story to tell yeah. um, 50. But now I don't know. You know, Pete's like, I think you should go 100 end at 100. And I'm like, 100. <laughs> OK, but you, you know what? You're right. Like you said, you said at the rate you're going, if you're going five issues a year. Hey, you know, it's possible. It is possible. It's possible. Absolutely is possible. Absolutely. Especially a story like this. You know, some stories it's really hard to extend. I feel like there's so many different directions that you could really yes. go into. And some of these new worlds or new, I'm not worlds, but new um, like cities. And yes. uh, I feel like even some of those deserve even more expansion too, because they're so unique from one another throughout your entire story. And you could even go back to some of these places and really expand too. Right. So I feel like what you've created has so many different doors where mm -hmm. I've read other things that other people have created and it's awesome, but just the story that they're telling the type of story doesn't have a lot of doors. So, you know, an end's coming, right? Yes. It does not feel like that at all. Yeah, it's very, it, it, the possibilities for expansion are endless. And that's a challenge too. It's yeah. like, wait a minute, I hold back. Yeah. Let me think about what's really important to tell here, you know? So what's a side story and what's something that's really crucial to the main plot? You know, so kind of balancing that. But I will tell you exactly what you just said, all these different places. I mean, we're going to be seeing the, 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 the Cyclops clans that were peppered and mentioned. We're going to be seeing, like I said, the mages. We're going to see how the humans rose to power. We're going to see so much. Um, I can't wait for people to read this. It's yeah. it's crazy. I mean, we're talking, what's that, 32 times the whole arc? Yeah. Because two issues, issue 13 was the first of this arc, and now 14 will be releasing soon. This campaign is for 15, 16, 17, 18. So it's a six issue arc, all 32 pages. Yeah. So what is that? 32? I'm it's terrible at math. 192? Something like that? Uh, yeah. It's crazy. It's, crazy. <laughs> it's a huge Drama. story. <laughs> you're, you're almost to omnibus status here. <laughs> <laughs> like literally you could, seriously, you could take one through 18. And I don't know what that nice number is, but 18 seems like a really good cutoff since that arc ends. And you yeah. could take a pretty good size omnibus oh, yeah. for people, which I think would be super collective and a lot of fun to have. I know. I know a couple of people have been requesting trade paperbacks of some of the volumes. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe we can do that. Um, I know Pete was... And Alterna was really interested in doing that. There's been seems that there's a little bit of a of a return or an interest in collected editions as of late. It's really interesting. So, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, I know he's really interested in doing that. Uh, but I mean, if we end up doing a hundred issues, <laughs> we could split it volume one fifty. You know, for the first fifty, and then volume two to fifty. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And yeah, dude, those would pop too. They yeah. really. <laughs> I think so, man, with the with the following that you have just, you know, I go on the Alterna and I, I watch sure. uh, 
you know, um, some of the uh, auctions that you do with all your art. Oh yeah, we had a good I've been time on your the last channel one. and watch you. It's so soothing. It's like sure. listening to Bob Ross. You know, <laughs> it's Geronimo going at it. You know, there's a twisted monster. Yeah. Little happy pustules and bangs. There you go. Yeah, definitely, definitely different than squirrels and stuff like that from Bob Ross. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, got to got to break it up a little bit. Got to break it up a little bit, man. If there's not blood, it's not Geronimo, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Got to have the red. You got to have the red, man. You got to have the red. Now, let's get back to that Indiegogo because it's not yeah. just those issues, man. You have some no. really cool stuff that you're doing with this particular campaign. Can Thanks, you kind of man. walk through some of that uniqueness that you're adding? Sure, sure. Uh, so first off is the Blood Realm Orchestral Soundtrack. Uh, <laughs> So insane, man. <laughs> I thought uh, the language, you, I should have been more like dumbfounded by when you said you were making a language, but I already saw the <laughs> logo. I'm like, this guy is crazy, man. <laughs> I've been working with a close friend of mine. Uh, he's a musician. And I've been telling him, we've been going back and forth, sending me tracks. I give him comments back and forth. And he's such a great musician. And I wish he would do more orchestral stuff personally. He doesn't do enough of it. And I said, listen, let's just do this. I always wanted to produce a vinyl. I always wanted a vinyl, right? And he was like, I'm down. And we did it. It took a while, you know, to really get the right tracks. And it's about 14, 15 minutes of music. Okay, seven minutes roughly on each side. And it's going to be an opaque red volume. Okay, so nice opaque red, the vinyl, excuse me. And I did the album art, so the front and the back. And that's it. I'm only printing 100. I think we, what do we have now? Only 30 left. I think there's only 30 yeah. that are left. Yeah. So they're going quick. They're going quick. Give me a second. I, I I don't know if you're okay with it, but maybe we should share it real quick. Should I share the Indiegogo? Real oh quick? yeah, go please. Yeah, yeah let's, go let's for pull it. this bad boy up real quick. Bear with me for a second, drone, because this is worth looking at, man. It's just insane all right here i got it i already had it pulled up but uh it was on the wrong screen so bear with me real quick yeah no take your time yeah so the vinyl is going to be all of these um orchestral soundtracks that really get you immersed into the world uh here we go yeah 91 backers look at that man 91 individual backers you have 56 percent um this is incredible, man, to be three days in and you're oh, at 56 percent. So it's exciting. Congratulations. It's thank uh, you. Thank you. I think it's uh, what's the word I'm thinking of. But I mean, it proves that what you're producing is being enjoyed by people, man, because that's. Oh, uh, thank you. That's awesome. And congrats. I mean, like every independent creator, that's mm -hmm. where they want to get to. Right. <laughs> and you're. Yeah. There. Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm, I'm just so grateful to the readers, you know, yeah. and doing this for them too that's the ultimate thing yeah the history inspires me but yeah. when i see people enjoy the story i mean i don't care if it was one person who was enjoying it i'd still do it you yeah. know yeah. that's, no, that's it the comes, key it comes across man it comes Thank across you. all right so um if you're not familiar because a lot of people use um kickstarter if you're not familiar right. with go go you look on the right and you can see all the different um perks that you could choose from yeah um Big and it'll tell you here. how many are remaining so it looks like 24 at least on this particular um package which comes with um everything everything <laughs> yeah so <laughs> this is this is the one to get you know i'll expand let's see if i can see yeah there you go yeah. Um, so maybe you can go walk us through this let's let's sure. up this drama that way everyone's clear on how yeah, to yeah. participate um in this current campaign absolutely oh sure sure so um this one is the featured perk we call it the war warrior of light bundle so chiron morville is the main character is also the warrior of light and this one gets you the vinyl orchestral soundtrack again opaque red a vinyl, the collector box. You could fit about 20 comics in the collector box. So this is a, a, a special edition box where you could store all of your blood realm comics, nice and sturdy. The entire, the entire arc of the Dawn of the Wolf, which is the latest arc, 13 to 18, all yeah. come signed. And then a sketch card commission of any blood realm character. So and drawn by me, of course. Yeah. So, and that's on the official Blood Realm sketch card. Nice, sturdy. You could see on my YouTube channel, Geronimo Draws. I draw them live. Every commission I draw live. Yeah. Every commission. So, in my opinion, that's the best. That's, that's the, the best, best one right there. That's everything. The bang for your buck. <laughs> and there's only 24 left of those. 
Okay. Yeah. 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 So let's, let's go down a little bit more. And then on the left, right, you'll see those covers that I was telling you about all these covers just look incredible. I believe this is Rossi, yeah. right? Yeah. This is Christian. Yeah, Christian Rossi. He did 15, he did 15 there. And so then, cool. uh, I mean, Oh, I love it. I love it. That's Chiron. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. All right. Let me this move over to 16. Uh, here. Another one, one by Rossi, right? Is this Rossi? Had yeah, that's Christian Rossi. Had to give Chiron a steed. You know, when we think about all of the the great, you know, even like Perseus, he had Pegasus. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and and of course Chiron's going to have his faithful steed. You know, we just we just love that stuff. You know, even Alexander the Great had Bucephalus, his 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 warrior. You know, I mean, excuse me, his horse, his war horse. Yeah. So of so course, going to be yeah, yeah. That's, that's a that's a given, my friend. And then uh, here we have I think here this Covington, here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is that period I mentioned where we see the massive creatures, uh, the prehistoric age of this world, and they're all vying for power over the lands, and all these little humans are worshiping them. We can see them on the bottom right there, right? They're that's running and fleeing. Run, that's run. crazy, man. Just oh. crazy. And of course, we needed a forearm ape. I mean, it's just. Nice I, I was just going to say that, like, dude, that's a forearm ape. I just noticed. Yeah. That. <laughs> I was like, we have to have it. How can we not have a forearm ape? I mean, that takes me back to the old pulp magazines. You know, I was a big yeah. fan of pulp comics and pulp magazines back in the day. A hundred percent. I just love reading that stuff. I collect some of those, and you know, some of them just have a wild, big forearmed ape, and it's the coolest thing ever. I mean, come on, let's go. It is so cool, man. I love it. I love it. And then here's the the one I was talking about yesterday. Like I said, yeah. all of them are good, but this is the one that stuck with me the most so yeah. far. Um, just the ability from an, and this, I can't speak to this because I'm not a very good artist, but you are, mm. um, to, to be able to have that contrast of the helmet being in front with the face in the back, the shadowing, just the detail on this is just next level, man. Insane. It's insane. absolutely insane. insane. He gets all of the, the pattern work that's, that's on Chiron's helmet here. Nailed it. And you know, there's a lot that Chiron goes through in this last issue. It's, it's pretty, it's, it's crucial. Mm -hmm. uh, help builds him who he is, mm -hmm. but you know, He's got to get back up. He's got to take it. And he's got to get back up and get that sword. So this kind of really symbolized all of that yeah. in this issue. He 100%. It. I haven't read it and you could kind of feel like mm -hmm. this is going to be a pretty uh, pivotal portion of the storytelling, yeah. right? And his oh, future yeah. moving on. Yes, yes. Yeah, well, excellent. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, we have some uh, interior art. Now it's going to be colored, but this is just a look at yeah. Christian's uh, black and whites before it's colored um it is everything is colored in the black white and red but of course we had to have some type of arena like a coliseum mm -hmm. you know because uh, again being a big fan of ancient roman art and having visited um and traveled to italy you know it's just it's crazy to think this stuff existed so i was like we have to have something like that in it is realm. insane huh yeah. i mean yeah, it is. I think this was just normal life. Let's head to the call. life. I mean, I'm a big UFC guy, so I do watch a lot of UFC. Uh, isn't that interesting, though? Not it's so very different. Similar, very similar, right? It's more civilized in one sense, but from a cultural standpoint, it's the exact same thing, right? Exact same thing. Yeah. It's exact same thing. 100%. Except what does that say about human beings? Your head, which it doesn't look like that happened in this picture. <laughs> right. <laughs> might be a little wounded, but you come back. With yes. That. Yes. <laughs> this is, this is how the interiors will look. So, you know? so we see some gladiators fighting in the arena yeah. and these, these goat warriors, the, this is the race of goat men who live in the South. Mm. Um, you can see they're just bloodlust. You know, they're hungry for the, the humans to fight in the arena. Yeah. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Big creatures coming out. Wild yeah. stuff. And this is this is Kier right here, right? Oh, no, this is Christian. This is all Christian. Yeah, Christian awesome. colored the work, too. Yeah. Hold it. Unbelievable. Yeah. This is Kier here. Yeah. Big at, double page. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> I don't know. This bottom left hand, it looks like a bunch of soldiers are being led. Yep. Yep. Dude, that the detail work in that must take forever. Oh, I gotta tell you, this is the craziest. Even Pete was like, "Wow!" He was like, yeah. "They brought a level of game to these pages that I have never seen." I mean, it's, it's just unreal, 
unreal what they what they were able to do. Um, again, you know, I, I wanted to fire them up, get them pumped, and uh, I, I, I hope I, it looks like I was successful. At it. <laughs> so, <laughs> to be honest, uh, earlier when you were talking after your uh, locker room speech, man, I felt like I could have drawn something. I mean, it would have been <laughs> nice, but I'm not even an artist, man. I'd be mean, like, give me a pen. <laughs> Give me a pen now. <laughs> and then here, that. Christian Rossi, another double page spread. Man, look now at we the see. Detail. Oh, spectacular. Um, I told him, I said, listen, ancient Rome, the Roman forum back in the day when they would do those big parades throughout ancient Rome. Let's, I want that. And I sent him references of the ruins. I sent him pictures I took while I was there. And man, did he just nail it. I, when he sent me this, I literally was like, <laughs> fell out of my chair. Um, the rituals that they do for the gods, you know, really expanding this whole world here. And as the grand sorcerer comes on this chariot, you know, it's, uh, man, nailed it. Just nailed, nailed it, it, nailed it, nailed it. And then we also explore um, parts, uh, the religious aspects. So we have monasteries that the mages do to, to train and they're performing an exorcism here. Mm. And we see that there's demons in this world that they have to battle. And Crazy. one of these demons is a demigod. It's called Silgameth. She is the, the daughter of the goddess of lust. Wow. Here she is. Yeah, no, she's really intense. She's brutal. So Crazy. pivotal creature, pivotal character in the world of Blood Realm. Vicious Crazy. beast. Love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Here's that vinyl you're talking about. Yes, there it is. I go, holy crap. He's got music now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Although when I, when I look at the portfolio of Alterna, which, you know, I, I own almost everything to be honest, cause I really enjoy Alterna. Um, but when you look at a title like blood realm hitting number 18, um, this is the time when you start to bring in all these extra things, right? Because of the yeah. longevity of your title, the fan sure. base that's been created. This is like the perfect time to bring in really unique stuff. And I mean, thank you. Work yeah. with uh with uh, you know, someone to create music for your title. I mean, that's just next level craziness. It was insane. I, I wouldn't have been able to do it if it wasn't for my buddy who happens to be so talented and we were talking, we should collaborate, you know? And um Next thing you know, just saying it ended up turning into reality. And I was like, you know, I'm I'm serious about this vinyl thing. And he was like, are you? I was like, yeah, no, I, I'll do it. And he was like, okay, let's let's do it. And here it is. That's so cool, man. I can't believe it. And here we go with a little more detail of your art because yes. you did the front and the back, I believe, of the uh, right of oops of yeah, the I um, did the front and the back. Yeah, look at that. So let's shot, give a shout out to Stephen James. Um, he is yeah. the composer and the performer. Absolutely mm -hmm. incredible, man. I can't wait to hear this. This is crazy. I Many can't wait ago. for you to either. So, yeah, we have so five, six have tracks. Have blood Realm. You have to have Blood yeah, Realm. Yes, the Blood Realm main title theme, you know. Uh, Iron Wolves are the, the cleric knights that Chiron Morvell leads and starts. So they have a little suite or a little theme themselves. Yeah. And I gave a theme. We want to do a theme for each of the last remaining old beasts that exist. Mm. And almost like boss music in a way, you know, something epic. And each track need to needed to represent the way they look. So this so we have one on the cover, and then you have this one here. So we wanted it to feel unique to each creature. Yeah. And then the last track, Ode to the Iron Wolves, is actually a track where we the only one that we have vocals and it's almost it, it's it, an actual um canon chant or song that the iron wolves sing wow yeah That's so crazy, now it's man. fully so, so yeah. steven did the singing too he did the singing singing for that he's very talented yeah That's just wait cool. till you guys hear it i'm gonna post on my youtube uh, a preview of how that will sound so this way you guys can hear exactly uh what kind of track it is wow 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 incredible man incredible here's that collector's box that you were talking yep. about which um is absolutely incredible um, thank you the artwork i assume this is all your art as well that's all yeah. me yeah that's like all that cover, is me. i believe uh, an earlier yep. right cover right if i remember correctly that is issue because now the numbering is different that is uh, number uh and nine seven eight eight dice was it eight i think it might i have eight. this one it looks like that's nine 
That's nine. Yeah. So it's not so eight. Yeah. Eight. Issue yeah. eight. So incredible, man. Incredible. Thank I love you. it. Love it. And then your famous sketch card <laughs> you watch draw often. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah. Look at these are the these are the sketch cards. So this is what you would get if you ended up getting that featured perk, the Warrior of Light perk. You will get one of these sketch cards, original art, uh, illustrated for you. So any character in the Blood Realm universe you want, I will give it the same attention and detail as I do with all of my cards. So we have a bunch of Blood Realm characters here: Chiron Morva on the bottom left, Captain Lycurgus on the right, and Old Beast on the top right. And then on the left, we have one of the mage exorcists that we saw in one of those pages above. Yeah. Man, how, how, uh, how many sketch cards do you have done? I mean, you have 27 days, but dude, that's a lot of work, man. I am going to be swamped. <laughs> I think so, man. Wow. I think so. That's crazy. Wow. Back issue bundle here. So if you're missing some issues, you can, you can get those here all in good, pristine condition. Beautiful, beautiful. All then, signed as well. Couple of t-shirts left, so not many left, but I have Iron some Wolf in limited sizes. Yeah, <laughs> that's their catchphrase. Iron Wolves never die. Love it, love it. And, and there's we have the villain's shirt. All hail the blighted one. Of course, got to be red, white. Yes, everything red, white, and black. I love it. Got to keep it, you know. And then we have some official or alterna comics trading cards. So. There we go. Perfect. All right. So we talked a little bit about that first Worry of Light bundle. Let's go down mm -hmm. and look at some of the other bundles. So here's a build, you your, build own your own bundle. You want to go get back issues, right? Sure. Yeah. Back issues. Oh, it's a digital bundle. So a lot of people who are you know overseas, yeah. you know, the shipping, unfortunately, I wish it wasn't the case, but shipping is just ridiculous, you know, from United States out to other countries. So got a digital bundle where you get digital copy of the vinyl and all of the six issues that's awesome yeah that's the latest issues 15 to 18 so if you already have 13 and 14 mm -hmm. you can get the latest issues right here beautiful that's the entire set right there dawn of the wolf all six sketch card commission although these are all offered as add-ons too so some people added on a sketch card commission yeah yeah Back issue bundle. So if people want to get all the stuff that came before. Collector box bundle. So this is, you get all six issues and you could get them shipped to you nice in the collector's box, ready to go. Nice. And we have the Blood Realm blanket. So yeah. A couple of these have gone. Again, they're on add-ons as well, but there is a huge blanket. That I remember I can't remember what live event, but they're like, dude, this blanket is gigantic. It's huge. <laughs> it's huge. I have it. It's amazing. And it's so comfortable. My yeah. cat loves it. <laughs> so yeah, nice fleece, great texture, and the colors are insane. Yeah, that's awesome. And then the hoodies that we've seen uh, quite often. I think you're wearing one now, right? One right yeah. now. Yeah. Kyron yeah. Morville riding a dragon. <laughs> And the map, Morgan. too. Yeah, that's so yeah. cool, man. Now, how does that map come? Is it like a poster? It's a canvas map. A high-quality canvas. canvas map. Yeah, that's why it's pricey, because it's a high-quality canvas map, and it comes frayed, burnt on the back. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's unreal. And then it's, it's, it's wrapped with a nice leather strap. So it feels like you're getting a piece of, of the world. It feels you know like you're mean? in a little shop in Mordrum and you're That's like, it. you need a map of the city. Like, hey, I got you. <laughs> I got to go on a pilgrimage. Can you give yeah, me one exactly. of those? <laughs> I got to know where I'm going. <laughs> Don't go too That's far. Man. There's a lot of dangerous places. That's right. And then we have the sketch cover commission. I'm happy to draw sketch covers as well, front and back for that price. Wow. That's, that's awesome, man. Yeah, so yeah, so look at, you got a lot of time to jump in if you haven't jumped in yet. Um, 27 days to go. Let's uh, yeah. help Geronimo um, get to the finish line. Um, and I cannot <laughs> wait to get my hands on those last issues, man. Oh, thank to you, Tommy. Feel that uh, that uh, story arc, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's been a wild ride, and I, I I'm so grateful to you, you know, for helping spread the word and doing oh, this interview. Course. Yeah, it it means a lot, you know. So I, I really appreciate it. You're a really good dude, man. I really enjoy. Thank you. you.
Yeah, yeah. Thank you, brother. Of course, man. Anytime, anytime. Well, Geronimo, I mean, I think we covered everything. I don't know if there's anything else that we left out that you want to kind of mention. No, I think that's everything. Um, you could tune into my YouTube channel, Geronimo Draws, if anyone wants to see how I work, if you want to see what the live streams are like, how I how I go about doing the sketch cards. So you could check that out as well. Yeah. And let's see, I also have audio comics on the channel. So some earlier issues, I did music and I voiced all of the, the speech balloons. So if, this way, if you want to see, you know, get a little immersion there going on, like yeah. it's a film. Yeah. Uh, I had a blast. As you're going through. That. Yeah, I love it, man. That's awesome. You know? So I did that for the first two miniseries and then issue seven. And that was it. So this way, you know, I don't want to give away the whole story by doing all of them, you know. So, but it's a fun little, I would say, uh, add on supplemental, you know, if you like to hear that stuff and hear the music and the voices. Love it. I love it. And I can't wait for this um, campaign to end. And then you can yeah. start playing your, your vinyl um, as your background, because you always have background music every time you're drawing. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. I will definitely have that up. I can't, I can't wait. I want to have like a launch party. I got like an album party, you know, we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, we could work that out. <laughs> now, Geronimo, as far as like cons or anything like that, are you doing any cons this year where people can meet you in person and get things signed or pick up copies? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I will I will look into some. Yeah. You know, I, I have to see. You know, the problem is, is that, uh, you know, the, the cost of the of driving there and then travel and then the, the hotels and then a lot of places may not give you a free booth. So, you know, that all adds up, you know, adds to it. But we'll see. We'll see. I, I never say never. Um, I used to do Comic-Con for many years. Yeah. But it was a grueling experience. That's the <laughs> yeah, San Diego did... one? No, I'm uh, New York. Oh, the, oh, that's, I mean, that's, it's San Diego, right? That's New York. They're both it's huge. Huge, uh, huge conventions. Yeah. 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 Just, Just the like labor a... of getting your... Especially oh my goodness <laughs> issues man and i wouldn't even know covers too yeah exactly exactly it's, it's a tremendous amount of work so you know that's the one good thing though i have to say about this this digital age we're in is that i can i can communicate directly to readers who otherwise i wouldn't be able to yeah. you know unless they waited for a convention you know now i can draw together and they can be there and then eventually you know when the it's the right convention i i, I will yeah, I will go. Yeah, absolutely. I will. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Geronimo, I, I can't tell you how much I enjoy talking to you. Glad that oh, you were able to come back on. I'm super excited about uh, this ending of the next arc that you have yeah. on the campaign. And uh, anybody that's listening, um, check out Blood Realm. It'll it'll transport you into a completely different realm. And I think yeah. you're going to really love it. And I cannot Thank you. I think I don't want to say this because uh, it might be difficult, but our next time you come on, we should only speak in that language that you're creating. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we man. The only ones that enjoy it, but it'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell are these guys doing? <laughs> that would be so epic, man. Even I would need to really research it. <laughs> Oh wow, that's awesome though. Maybe we could practice the uh the greetings and everything. Just a greeting. Let's do a greeting. Let's start small and we'll okay. build to, like full sentences later on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there eventually, Tommy. We'll get there. Exactly. <laughs> well, uh Geronimo, thank you again. Always appreciate you. Congratulations. Um, let's help yeah. him get to that finish line. And uh we'll blast this out, my friend. And you're always awesome. welcome here, man. Always. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You bet, man. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and uh, we'll talk soon, my friend. Take care. Take care.